guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I might actually try and film this on my DSLR camera, which I haven't done for a long time. It doesn't actually look much different because I have to use my not so nice lens since this bathroom is really, really small and all my really beautiful lenses need like quite a bit of room to fit everything in frame. But I thought we'd just give it a go. But as I say, we are doing my favorites and today I thought I would just quickly talk about two skincare products I've been liking and then I'm gonna put on a bit of an everyday makeup look that I've been doing pretty much every day this month. And then I've got a bunch of like cozy kind of lifestyle favorites to talk about. So lots of stuff if you are stuck at home, bored, and needing some entertainment. I hope that some of the movies, TV shows, books, albums, things that I can recommend will be useful. So let's first talk about skincare. My first favorite for the month is the Drunk Elephant TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum. This is actually a product that I've loved for years. It's a 12% AHA BHA blend. So it's got both alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. I really, really enjoy Drunk Elephant skincare. I do think it's extremely expensive. I think it works, but I think there are quite a few products that are more affordable that do kind of the same job. This is one that I still think is very much worth the money. Although after this is finished, I will be trying out some of the acids from The Ordinary, which is an area of their skincare that I haven't explored yet. So I'm quite excited for that to hopefully see if I can find something that does kind of a similar job to this, but in their line. But I do really, really notice a difference in my skin when I'm not using this. So I use this twice a week at night. I find any more and actually my skin does get a little bit or oh, it's like over exfoliated. Like I really feel like I only need it twice a week. It's just enough to give my skin that extra boost it needs. I wake up the next day with a really glowing complexion, smooths out texture, it doesn't over irritate my skin or anything. And it also allows some other evenings free <laughs> of actives for me to use things like retinols and other products that I wanna use. So twice a week and I've really been enjoying that one. I also need to make a bit of a retraction on a fail that I included last monthly favorites. So <laughs> last month I talked about the Purito comfy water sunblock and how I didn't like it because it was pilling on me like mad and I had at that point tried it with so many different combinations of different skincare and such just to try and see like how can I make this work but it was just pilling like mad but I feel like perhaps my skin a might have been going through a bit of a weird phase because I've noticed that almost all of the sunscreens I have in my collection started to pill like it was not really just in the end of this product, it was kind of everything. And also that if I tried to layer this with too many sort of other products underneath, it definitely pilled. So my suggestion with this, it's actually what I've got on my face today. My skin isn't pilling so far, but you can't rub your face too hard with it. You have to rub it in, let it set, and then like don't touch it. If you're someone that uses a kabuki brush to blend in your foundation, I don't think this would be good. Um, I use a sponge, so I find that fine because you're sort of dabbing the product on, I guess, on top. But it does offer really, really high protection. It's 100% physical and it's fragrance free essential oil free so it's very gentle on the skin great if you have really really sensitive skin but yeah I definitely have to make a retraction on this one because this is not a fail it is a really nice product you just have to know how to use it all right so moving on to makeup I'm just going to pull my hair out of my face I actually let my hair air dry today this is what my hair goes like when it's natural naturally air dried it's quite unruly waves like it I feel like it doesn't wave in a really consistent way it sort of looks all scraggly on the end although I'm so overdue for a haircut I have to give myself one if you missed me giving Alex a haircut on Instagram TV then definitely go check that out my Instagram's just at Anna Elaine it's hilarious also I'm wearing his sweater today and I just love this sweater I don't even know where it's from but it's like 100% wool and it's so cozy and I don't know what it is about men's clothing but it's just better it's just better than women's. But the first part of my very easy, like everyday isolation makeup face has been using the Hourglass Stick Foundation. This is in the shade Cream. I'm trying to use this one up because I do kind of prefer the Makeup Revolution one. Um, and this is really expensive, so I'm just trying to use it up. But what I've been doing is taking my sponge. I showed this, I think it was in a vlog recently, or it might have even been in my QA, I can't remember. A recent video, I showed this technique where I actually apply the stick foundation straight onto the sponge and then I blend the foundation into my skin this way. I just get a little bit more control about where the coverage goes. I sort of stumbled across this technique because as I say I was trying to avoid using a brush to blend in my foundation because of that sunscreen um, that was pilling so I tried it this way and I just really really liked how it looked and it was easy to apply. The great thing about using this stick foundation as well is it's just, it doubles as a foundation and a concealer. So I can use a lighter layer all over my face and then I just add a little bit of extra coverage where I need it for spots. But then I'm going in with a cream bronzer. I'm using the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. It's been discontinued guys. They've reformulated it 
and supposedly it's not the same, which is a darn shame. <laughs> but I still have heaps of this old formula. I will be treasuring this. Even though I use this nearly every day, it is still gonna probably last me another year. Like, there's still so much product in there, so I will enjoy it, but be very sad the day that it does finally run out because I won't be able to replace it, which is just so oh, annoying. <laughs> this whole routine as well doesn't require any brushes. It's literally just a sponge. That I think that's kind of why I've fallen into this into this everyday makeup routine because it is so easy and I don't need any other like kind of brushes or tools. I can just literally use my sponge. For blush this month, I've been trying quite a few new cream and kind of liquid blushes, particularly from Korean brands. I got a couple off at Yes Style. The ones that I've been enjoying the most are these ones from the brand Apu. And they're the Juicy Pang blushes. They're like little liquid blushes. I thought my favorite shade was gonna be this one. It's like a really nice kind of dusky mauve color. It is pretty, but it's very, very subtle. So it takes a bit to kind of show up. But my favorite shade's actually been this one. I think it's Violet, number one. I'll put the exact name of it down below. They have a very similar finish. They look really scary going on, but they're really sheer. <laughs> um, but they've got a very similar kind of finish to like the Flower Beauty Blush Bomb. So I just paint a little bit of that on. I do find you can use a sponge, but you just can't use too much pressure. And they provide such a nice dewy glow on the cheeks, so I've really been enjoying that because I don't need to use highlighter, which is a win. <laughs> my next step is just to fill in my brows. I'm just still using my Marcel Perfect Brow, light to medium. Absolutely love this stuff. Just creates the most natural, fluffy looking brows. And the color of this is like the perfect kind of coolness for me as well, where it doesn't look like ashy and like unflattering but it is definitely a cooler toned sort of brow color really push those front hairs up as well <laughs> put a little bit of uh, nude liner on my waterline as well because I'm looking quite tired <laughs> but then my next favorite product I've been using heaps this month on my no makeup makeup days is the L'Oreal Paradise Mascara but this is the brown one now I had a very interesting experience with the black version of this a couple of years ago or maybe it was about a year ago I tried the black one on recommendation from literally everyone because people rave about it but I found that my eyes went cloudy and they got really irritated and so I didn't use it like I stopped using it and I hesitated on trying out the brown color for ages because of that experience but I kept seeing this at my local chemist and just being like, that looks like the perfect proper brown color. Like it's an actual brown mascara, not just a brown black or, you know, a slightly off black. It's like an actual brown. So I was really tempted to try it. And then the other day it was on sale at Chemist Warehouse for something quite affordable. So I decided just to bite the bullet and try it. I thought it'd be worth just trying just to see whether the color is any good. And something I noticed when I was trying it it is so fragranced and I wonder if that's what irritated my eyes the other time. I certainly haven't had the same experience with this particular tube as I did last time with the black one, but it's still quite fragranced to the point where like my eyes do feel a little bit like there shouldn't be fragrance in this product. <laughs> like I can kind of understand why it irritated my eyes. So strong, like that just seems stupid. This is a product that goes on your eyes. Why would you fragrance it? So that's, um, that's something I don't like about it, but the actual... The actual product and the color is just so beautiful. Like I've just been doing such a simple little makeup look lately and just a bit of brown mascara just helps to open up your eyes but it still looks extremely natural, you know? I really like the actual product. I just wish they would take the fragrance out. I don't, that seems even more unnecessary than like fragrance and skincare. Like I'm like, what? So if you are extremely sensitive to fragrances and scents, then I would highly recommend not trying this one. If it's not normally something that bothers you, I think you'll be fine. Like I can kind of put up with it, but it certainly would be nicer if this product didn't contain fragrance. That's how I feel. And then for lips, of course, I'm just doing my usual routine of the NYX Suede Lip Liner and Lavender and Lace. Sometimes I'll skip this as well. Um, I just find on camera, I like to have my lips a little bit more defined. But like if I'm not gonna be on like Instagram stories and stuff that day, then I've just been skipping it. I've definitely talked about these in a recent video as well. It's the same Eco Soul lip oils. And this is the shade Berry. I might as well take my hair clip out now too. I have the Berry and the Honey, and I've really been enjoying both. I tend to reach for the Berry one a bit more because on top of the lip liner, I think, I don't know, the subtle, very tiny, teeny tiny bit of pink in it just helps to look, I don't know, it looks a bit better. It also doesn't matter if I get a bit of lip liner on the 
doe foot. Like it just doesn't look quite as gross as the one in the yellow. These are definitely just like conditioning lip glosses. Like you want to think of them as a lip gloss, not so much as a hydrating conditioning lip balm or treatment because they're not the most moisturizing, but they certainly are less sticky and kind of drying as a traditional lip gloss. So they're really somewhere in between, but I just think they look so pretty on. It's just such a nice gloss. It's really like healthy looking. And yeah, this has been my little everyday face for the last little while. I don't really have any more style favorites. I mentioned my Emu Australia slippers last month and because circumstances haven't really changed, we're still, in a sort of level three lockdown here in Australia. But you can go out for a walk to get some exercise, but we, we like things are still very much in lockdown. So I am still living in my slippers. As I say, I'm stealing Alex's sweaters all the time and I'm actually wearing jeans today. I've been wearing my track pants a lot, um, but that is, yeah, isolation life. Before we get into films, let's first talk about food. I was looking over all my blog posts on my blog and realizing that like the food category definitely has the most blog posts out of all the categories. And I think I'm pretty much gonna turn my blog into a food blog. The same on my Pinterest, the one board that has more posts than anything is the comfort food board. <laughs> and it's just because I love, I love food. And I just, comfort food is just so nice right now. I'm just really enjoying it. And doing like recipe blog posts just brings me so much joy and trying other people's recipes and that, like it's just been so much fun. So if my blog does pretty much exclusively become a food blog, I'm not sorry. But I did want to talk about and recommend an amazing mac and cheese recipe that I tried out this month. If you watched my vlog that I had go up this month, me and Alex uh, featured the BBC Good Foods butternut squash and sage mac and cheese. And it was so good. That was on recommendation from the Anna Edith who's one of my favorite youtubers here her content at the moment is so nice as well i mean it's always good but i'm particularly really enjoying her just at home vlogs i mean that's i think when she's in her element when she's just making content around her house she featured that recipe a couple of weeks ago on her one of her vlogs and i was like to alex i was like we have to make this so i like save the recipe and it was so good so i'll have that linked below we also made this month an amazing it was this week actually but it was an amazing like kind of like butter chicken it was sort of an indian curry didn't really have a specific name um alex found this recipe on an australian channel called nat's what i reckon he's your typical aussie man like there's quite a few f-bombs that come up in his content so be aware don't watch that around children or people that would be offended by that. If you've seen videos from Aussie Man Reviews, this guy is like Aussie Man Cooks. He does these really cool food videos. I think he's, I think his channel is quite new as well and he's kind of blown up in this whole sort of isolation thing. I think he did like an isolation risotto or something and it, it went really big. But his curry, his like Indian curry is so good, chicken curry. The only problem I have with his content is that he doesn't write out the recipe. So someone I think in the comments wrote it out kind of, and that's how Alex followed it. But it was a wee bit like, yeah, it's very Aussie. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, she'll be right. So some of my favorite films this month that we watched, uh, we started the month watching quite a few Wes Anderson films. We've seen The Grand Budapest Hotel a few years ago, really, really loved it. So we watched a couple of other ones like Isle of Dogs and Fantastic Mr. Fox. He's an extremely identifiable approach to filmmaking and I just think it's so unique and like so different to anything that's out there. So I've really enjoyed them, especially Isle of Dogs. I really, really enjoyed that movie. But also watched the movie Hacksaw Ridge this month, which is a war movie. It was out a couple years ago, but Alex had it suggested to him, so we watched it. And it was really good, like it was really heartwarming. Quite graphic, as you'd expect, it's a World War II movie, but I really liked the storyline. I thought the acting in it was really good as well. Oh, what else did we watch this month? We watched two really scary movies, Bird Box and A Quiet Place. I feel like Bird Box was like all over the internet about a year ago and I didn't really get on the train and watch it back then, um, but we watched it this month as well as A Quiet Place. And both of those films are very similar kind of in like, kind of concept, but but different. I don't know, it's really hard to explain. They're both really scary films though. I didn't know A Quiet Place was gonna be scary because you guys recommended it to me. You're like, you must watch this. And then I was like, literally under the blanket, like most of the film. I'm not very good with scary movies, but I do agree that it was a good movie. I just get really terrified in scary films. So if you want to be scared, then both of those were great. A TV show that we have been working our way through this month is Ozark. Again, another recommendation from you guys. So thank you so much. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a brilliant show. We're about, we nearly finished the second season. It's based around like drug lords and money laundering and things like that. So it is very intense content, um, can be quite graphic at times as well. And it's just, yeah, really intense. 
there's some very shocking scenes in it. The one thing that I'm really appreciating in it is that I both love and hate almost every single character. Their characters are so well-rounded and are so realistic and human because as I say, they all kind of have elements that you really like about them. And then there's elements where you're like, I hate you, why are you doing that? And so it's actually really realistic. And I feel like I'm really connected to many of the characters now. So it's a really good show. My favorite book that I read this month was The Little Book of Huga, which is The Danish Way to Live Well. This was an extremely easy read. And I'll be honest, I haven't had a lot of time to read this month because I've been doing, I've been working really hard on me and Alex is like, music website like updating that i'm um, setting up our socials for it and just like yeah working on that kind of side of my life so i definitely found reading took a back step but i did manage to get my way through this book it was a very very easy read you could almost read this in like a day to be honest it's sort of one of those sort of like dense coffee table books so it's not just pictures there's obviously a lot of words in it it's one of those books though where you could just open it up to any page and kind of just enjoy a few pages at a time. So it is very like an advanced coffee table book and it is also extremely beautiful. I picked this up while I was in Copenhagen last year and I just hadn't got around to reading it because I had, you know, other books that I was devouring. But because we've been spending so much time at home and I've been wanting to kind of create that real sense of like coziness and just, I guess, embrace being trapped at home a bit more, like trying to think of it as like a good thing. This book was really helpful. It just, it really does, as I say, it made me kind of want to cook more like comforting, cozy foods and like take the effort to like light the candles around the house at night and put on the mood lighting and just kind of embrace the fact that we're all stuck at home. So I'd highly recommend reading this book if you are after something like a really cozy, heartwarming read that'll make you feel good. This book is just an extremely comprehensive sort of analysis of that, of that Danish phenomenon that is Hygge because it's very hard to put into words. You can't just say it it just means coziness because it doesn't. There's so much more depth to Hygge. Um, but it is something that I try and live in my life as well, especially at the moment. So highly, highly recommend that. And then I also had one of you ask about what are my favorite albums? Like what music am I listening to? So I'll be really honest because music's quite a big part of my life. I'm not someone that typically then goes and listens to music in my spare time, which I know sounds strange, but I guess it's almost like I can get a bit sensory overload with too much music. When I'm doing it for my job, when I'm practicing and I'm like listening to works for my music work can then get a bit overwhelming to almost go and listen to other music. Um, but I do have a couple of albums of things that I either this month specifically really got into as well as a couple of like standard playlists on my Spotify that I turn on when I do just want to chill. It's kind of music I don't have to concentrate on. It's just there and it just it creates a nice kind of ambience, I guess. The first album I'd recommend is the Emperor Quartet's Britain String Quartet Number no. 2 album. Oh my gosh, if you want to hear the best, best version of Britain's String Quartet, number two, I would listen to that. It is so good. This is like a true art music kind of album. So, you know, it is the kind of music that I, that I don't really put on just to like chill to. It's the music I put on to really concentrate and absorb and, and enjoy in that way. But it's extremely profound. I actually played that work for my own PhD. So I'm very connected to it on a very personal level but I just think their interpretation of it is wonderful. And then one of you on Instagram actually reached out and let me know about, funnily enough, the Danish String Quartet, um, their album Woodworks, which is like kind of a folk kind of album. It's really hard to describe it. It's classical music, but it's, but it's folk songs sort of arranged for the String Quartet. And it's like Danish folk music essentially. And oh my gosh, I'm just so in love with it. Like it's just, there are some songs that make you just feel extremely meditative and calm and others that are just so uplifting and you just want to dance and it's just, it's really cool. So I'd highly recommend listening to that as well. If you're wanting some really chilled kind of jazz, French kind of cafe music, then there's literally a playlist called French Cafe Lounge on Spotify that I love. And that's what I put on whenever I'm like cooking or baking or just yeah, hang around the kitchen trying to like prepare a meal. It's just very like, Ooh, look at me, I'm in Paris and I'm cooking great food kind of vibes. If I'm trying to get a lot of work done and I'm trying to concentrate and, you know, really tap into that high level of focus, um, then I absolutely love the study ambient plus guitar playlist from on Spotify. It sort of just features really meditative, kind of nothingless music that just sits in the background and I just find that I tune out to it really quickly. It's really beautiful, but it is that kind of music that you'll just tune out to and you can actually then really focus on the task at hand. That album got me through my PhD. 
It's amazing. So if you've got, if you're really struggling to concentrate on your work at the moment, perhaps you're studying, perhaps you're working from home, and you need something to drown out the screams of your children in the background, then I would highly recommend that album. So those are my April favorites. I, it was quite packed in the end with a lot of products and a lot of recommendations. Remember, you can interact with me over on my socials throughout the week. It's just Anna Elaine on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. And until my next video, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days, and we'll talk soon. Bye.